that happens in friendship and in um, and in the church. Bureaucratic leaders rely on established rules and procedures to guide the leadership approach. So they have uh, organization rules. Okay, uh, uh, you have to have the board meetings, the membership meeting, the members meeting to arrive at certain decisions. Uh, there are many churches like that. But there are also many churches that they just discuss and then they agree and then they will put in action. One week they decide and then they, next week they put in action. Some churches have to wait for the, the yearly meetings or wait for the quarterly meeting in order to uh, make decisions. So if they say, okay, we want to change, they have to wait for a quarter for that to be discussed in the meetings. Pros. Bureaucratic leadership focuses on minimizing risks by following established protocols and, and uh, guidelines that they reduce risks because they have rules already. Okay, so people have to follow the rules. So if you don't follow the rule, we don't uh, let you, you know, your, your ideas will not be accepted. So they avoid risks that everything has to go through the procedure to make sure it's safe. They establish clear structures, rules, and processes that promote efficiency, consistency, and order within the organization. So they have a clear structure and rules that promotes efficiency. Now, sometimes it's not efficient. Sometimes it's, it is. Some church organization is not efficient. It takes a long, long time to change. And also, they cannot change many things because it's hard to go through the process to bring about like for instance to have a, a, a youth meeting a youth worship there are many people opposed to that now there might be reasons to oppose to that but there are reasons to to agree to that for instance maybe 80 percent of the members don't want a youth meeting but the youth want the youth meeting and then if you have a youth worship the church can grow more so the youth vote for a youth worship but most of the people the adults don't want a youth worship they just want the youth to mingle with them and they feel better because they, they see the youth uh, they, the youth are more energetic and happy and so they like the youth to be together with them so they always vote against the youth uh, worship what happens is the youth are not happy and the church cannot grow but if they allow the youth to have the separate worship then the youth can you know, become very happy and joyful, and then the, the, the youth worship can grow. So uh, sometimes rules or procedures don't necessarily, are not necessarily efficient. Sometimes they don't, cannot achieve certain goals. And churches with uh, strong bureaucratic rules, they cannot, very, uh, sometimes they cannot change. For years and decades, they follow the same rules. They, the church is always the same style, never change. Uh, the worship style is always the same, or they just sing songs, uh, and it's always the same, never change. Now, now, it will promote consistency, because it will be always the same, consistent, more consistent, and order, that it will follow order. So that's the advantage. Okay, the cons. These leaders tend to prioritize adherence to established rules and procedures over adaptability. So they would prioritize uh, rules. They have to follow rules instead of adaptability, adapting to the situation. For instance, uh, when the church suddenly have a lot of youth, it has to be adaptable. When you have so many youth, then you want to, to have a youth worship. So that is adaptability. Thus making them inflexible and rigid in their approach. So that it is in, inflexible. It's hard to change. It's very rigid. N nothing changes. Furthermore, they often tightly control tasks and responsibilities. Lim limiting individual autonomy and decision-making authority. So they control tasks, tightly control. The, the things has to be done a certain way. You have to follow the rules. 
and also tightly control the responsibility. You have to do this and then uh, sometimes people have, you know, each person has different strengths and, uh, and spiritual gifts. They have certain spiritual gifts, but the rules might not allow them to use their spiritual gifts. And then limiting their individual autonomy. They cannot be autonomous. They cannot be free to do their own thing. Sometimes people, when they're free, they can do things better. And also in decision making, it's hard to have. Uh, so limiting uh, the people to participate in. Uh, uh, it's limit the, because the procedure of making decision is it's, uh, difficult. It's cumbersome. So it's hard for them to go through decision making. Okay, so bureaucratic leaders should have good bureaucratic rules and guidelines. He should test them before he makes them firm rules. So he should test the rules. He should try to analyze the situation, the organization and the followers to see whether the rules are functional. So he should analyze the situation. Is this workable? Are this realistic? Should we follow these rules? And how does this work at home? So at home, if it's always rules, okay, you have to do this thing, do that thing. Now, if you have watched the movie, The Sound of Music, uh, you notice that at first, uh, at home, that uh, because the father was a, uh, a, a military man, so he blows a whistle and then the children all have to follow and obey. So that was at the beginning, it's all rigid. So at home, is it like that, that the children have to follow certain rules? Now, there are advantages of rules, uh, but there's also the advantage of uh, adaptability, that the, the, the rules can be adaptable. And the place of work, now, in man, many places of work, they have to follow rules. They have to follow protocol, because for protocols, because it's... Um, they have the certain rules, the government, might, the government might give them rules. And in a church, uh, there has to be some rules. But it depends on how many rules, how rigid are the rules. And in friendship, now if in a friendship it's always rules that is very... <laughs> it's not like a friendship relationship. It's, you know, uh, uh, you have to tell me ahead of time uh, to, to ask for... Uh, a, a time that we can uh, be together, that we have a date, that it has to be rules. Okay, democratic leadership. Democratic leaders involve others in the decision-making process and encourage collab collaboration. So they all make decisions together and gather all the information together. Pros, they include team members in decision-making and foster a sense of ownership and commitment in the team. So when people are involved in decision making, they, they feel ownership of the, of the organization or the church. They feel they're part of the church or organization. Uh, and then they are more committed if this is my project. You know, people are generally, they are more committed if it is their project. It is their idea to do this. For instance, if some people really a zealous to have a youth meeting and then you you let them have the youth meeting then it's be, it's his project he's very happy of course we need to encourage them this is God's project it's also your project because you you really are motivated to do it it's not wrong that we are motivated to do certain things it's not wrong because it can come from God and the main thing is that he should have a relationship with God and he should have the the uh, the insp inspiration from God to do that Moreover, this leadership approach helps employees feel valued. They feel they are important. They feel that the, the boss would value them and have a voice. They can speak. They have a voice that people will listen to them. In essence, this leads to increased job satisfaction and motivation. So they are more satisfied in the job, in what they're doing, and in motivation. Okay, and then the cons. Democratic styles of leadership can be slower due to discussion and census, uh, consensus building to build up, you know, uh, to make decisions and to have a consensus. It takes time. 
Democratic leaders can leadership can lead to uh, disagreements and conflicts because sometimes people disagree. So they need to discuss. Among team members may also that it could arise among the team members, just requiring effective conflict resolution. For instance, even discussing about whether they should have a youth worship. They might argue and then uh, some people may, you know, may shout and yell. Now, of course, there should be teaching that they should talk gently. They just express their views and to respect the views of the other people. And then, but in the process, some people might say, you try to divide the church, you try to split the church. So then it can cause conflicts. Now, I have seen a church that, you know, they want to use the cell group um, method of uh, uh, following up on people. And then uh, those people who don't like the cell church, they really are against it. And then the church is split. So that's something not good. Uh, if it causes a split of church. So sh people should learn to have a wider mentality, to accept other people's point of view, to see the advantage of, for instance, having a youth worship and having different you know, approach to ministry. So that is, um, is a good mentality. Democratic leaders should learn to analyze the situation in order to discern whether the ideas of the people are workable and good. So he should be able to achieve the situation, I, I mean sorry, to analyze the situation so to discern whether the ideas are good or workable. So he should be able to analyze it. Because sometimes when people give ideas, the ideas may not be good and might not be workable. So as a leader myself, Sometimes people give me ideas, suggestions. I have to be able to analyze whether this is workable. If it's not workable, I need to, I need to, how to explain to them, to, to let them think about the disadvantage of this method. But we should, as a leader, we should also not to be just talking about the negative things when they give suggestions. We should first think about the the advantage, the advantage of this approach, the advantage of this approach. And uh, so to, to uh, now I, I, I give you a real example of my wife. Uh, now, this is my second wife. My first wife passed away. And then uh, when we have the um, after we got married, and then she suggests that well, we that we go to the beach, we go to different places to take photos. Actually, we take the photos ourselves. We put a tripod there and and uh, and then take the pictures ourselves. And then she suggests that we'll go to the beach. And I said, well, when we go to the beach, the sand will be blown to the camera, and also the feet will be dirty with the sand and and then she thought about it and later you know uh, in that situation she just told me she just said well but it's more romantic uh, to take pictures in uh, at the beach so I agreed to that she told me the advantage but later she asked me she said it looks like when I give some suggestions that you will first think about the disadvantages first so I think about it, and I said, yeah, that's true in some instances, that immediately I think of the sand, and I think of it as a problem, instead of thinking from her perspective. So I need to think about her perspective. Why does she want to, have, uh, to have, uh, go to the beach to take photos? I have to, you know, I have to find out why. So that is... Uh, wisdom to ask for her opinion but at that time I, I I did not think of that and so I I failed I did not ask her but then after she told me that I become more aware of that and then I what happened is I asked her re reason so after that 
I pay attention to what she suggested and I ask her uh, why she want to do that and also I tell her my concerns so that way that we're more democratic uh, now I'm not a autocratic person but it was just my way of saying well I thought of the problem first so I hope we all would think about this you know many people they have a tendency to first say no before they think about the whole situation so instead of saying no first, we can say, okay, please tell me why you want to do that. What, is the, what are the advantages of following that? So we, we should ask people uh, what, uh, what are the advantages so that we can have a, a, a wide perspective instead of just saying, well, it's too difficult. So I hope that we, we learn this. Uh, now, it's very natural for many pastors for many husbands to be, or even for many wives, to always say no to suggestions. Like the children say, well, let's go for a, a trip. The parent would say, well, it takes too much money. Uh, we don't have money, we don't, we don't have time. So immediately he would think of the problem. Or the, the members say, well, let's have a, uh, I want, want to suggest the idea of having a youth worship. And the pastor would say, well, uh, it was split up the church and it, it's all kind of difficulties and the youth cannot take care of themselves and uh, all kinds of problems you know, that they raise. So we want to, now youth worship are not necessarily taken care of by the youths, but in a youth worship generally that you have the leaders leading them but also you have the youth doing part of the worship so that they feel part of it. So that's what I meant that they also participate in the, in the worship. So this is something that we need to learn to you know, listen to people, to have a wider perspective, okay? And then two, he should build up good relationship with the people so that they will feel free to express and participate. So there should be good relationship that they feel free, they don't feel threatened to give suggestions to the pastors. So uh, are your members free to talk to you when they have suggestions? Or they're afraid to talk to you? Or they just talk to your wife? Or they just talk to some leaders? But they don't talk to you because they are afraid that you would reject the idea. So we, we need to think about this uh, as a leader. Three, he needs wisdom from God and should be able to discern the situation and bad suggestions in order not to bring destruction. So he need to be able to discern, to have the wisdom from God. And then he need to have the wisdom to show people why it is important to follow God's way and why it is God's way that we do things this way. But sometimes people use, you know, they're not using principles from the Bible. They just use tradition and they think that this is biblical. For instance, they say, we have to sing hymns. And they think that this is biblical. Or, now I noticed that uh, in some churches, now I hope you don't mind if that's happening in your church, that I say this. In some churches, they think that the women have to wear skirts. They cannot wear pants. Now, actually, this came from the Western, Western uh, church. In the Western church, generally, the women will wear skirts. Uh, but that is not a, you know, a principle that the Bible says that women cannot wear pants. That's, you know, there are many women who wear pants, but they, when they go to church, they have to wear skirts, skirts or dresses. Now, that is not a biblical principle. It's just a tradition. But many people think that this is a church principle, a Bible principle, but it's not. So we need to discern, discern what is uh, from the Bible. So how does this work at home? Now, democratic, if it's democratic at home, we should 
also educate the children to think about the advantages and disadvantages of certain things and also how important it is for us to obey God how important it is for us to to uh, not to sin so that their suggestion will not be saying let us do it freely let us just uh, play games all the time let, let us just watch uh, TV all the time so that they, they know that this would not be beneficial to them so they need to understand uh, also in the church they need to understand uh, we don't do certain things because we know that this thing will damage the church and in the place of work uh, that discuss how to improve now many places of work don't encourage a discussion uh, but a number of places encourage that because they know that you know the workers have their opinion and they have their experience when they work do certain things they notice that is uh, they have to overcome certain problems so they need to discuss uh, that the pro about the problem and how to solve the problem and then how, how about in a church now in a church generally the members also participate in the decision making and uh, but sometimes so there should be a balance a balance of biblical principle and opinions of people and to have the wisdom from God so it's not just people's opinion um, now some people think that if most people agree to do certain things then it's the right way it's not necessarily true because in a church there can be many lukewarm Christians they say well we don't want too many evangelism outreach because they don't want to do it they say we cannot you know we cannot be in a welcoming uh, the welcome team we cannot welcome people because those people don't like us they don't accept us when we welcome them some people would give us reasons not from the Bible that they don't want to the church to go very zealous and evangelistic and uh, spiritual or spirit fill because according to their opinion they don't like it so we don't let people's feelings to guide the church it's not people's feelings it's God's principle so should people should understand God's principle they should understand the Bible and then they discuss according to the biblical principles and according to this present situation the present difficulties how can we overcome the problems so they should when when is there is democracy in the church there should be consideration of the biblical principle and the present situation and how to grow now also it's true that many church members might not have the desire to for the church to grow they just want the church to stay as it is they don't want to uh, put too much effort into growth they want to put more effort into keeping the church as it is so that they feel comfortable and in friendship now in friendship generally is more democratic because it's generally what they want and if they don't want it then they don't they won't stay in the friendship Lucifer leadership pro uh, the leadership uh, provides freedom and autonomy to the individuals allowing them to make their own decisions so each person make their own decisions pros Lucifer leadership empower individuals with autonomy pronouncing creativity and initiative so they so they have the decision power and they can use the creativity and initiative now if the the workers or the leaders or the followers they all follow biblical principles or they are creative and they follow good rules then it's a good way because then they are free to to do what they want to do so there's a advantage of the Lucifer leadership that each person can express and do things their way that they find ways that are helpful to them okay and then additionally in this style of leadership employees are encouraged to take ownership of the work resulting in increased self-motivation so they have ownership of what they do 
and they have increased self motivation. They have in more self motivation to to make it uh, to make it work. So that's advantage. For instance, um, now actually we should have this kind of leadership uh, certain, to a certain extent. For instance, we let someone take care of the youth worship. We let them have the power, the decision, the ability to make decisions. And then, of course, we want to know what they are doing, but we give them certain freedom. We give them certain freedom so that they are free to do what they do, and then they have a sense of belonging. The cons, this type of leadership can, can oh, the cons, the, the negative things, the problems, can lack structure and guidance, leaving employees feeling lost or uncertain. Sometimes employees will feel lost or uncertain or uncontrolled. No, uh, no rules, they just do whatever they want to do. So it depends on the quality of the people. If the quality of the people is poor, then this method is not good. The freedom and autonomy granted in Lucifer leadership can also lead to a lack of accountability and a decrease in overall productivity. So it's not accountable. People have, don't have to be accountable to someone and also it's not productive. If the people are not, uh, they're not responsible. So the Lucifer leader should discern if this style of leadership works in a situation. It will work if the followers are responsible and they are capable. If it does not work, you should switch to another style. Sometimes people use this style because they just don't supervise the people. Now, sometimes people just don't supervise and then they use this style. So this is not a good reason because they just don't know how to do it. So how does this work at home? Now, in, at home, sometimes they just let the children and the spouse do whatever they want to do. It's not a good way uh, because uh, if they don't transform the children that they don't have. Okay, the bureaucratic leadership.
the question seems to be asking that 